your SP or did you, you know, beat somebody? Nah, Todd Terry. Terry. Well, it was Todd Terry's SP that I kind of jacked from him, so. <laughs> My first piece of equipment was the MPC 60. That's what I used to make my first album. And um, from there, I jumped. I jumped on the, um, the 950. And, um, like th those were my first, my first two, so to say. Just to answer the question. And, and same, same thing. Like, was that, was that you? Did you go out there and get one? Or who did you see that was using it? And then you kind of like, well, let me get on. Let me. Let me Mess with it. Say it again. Who, who did like he, he used Todd Terry's like did, did you go um, get on or was it? I was influenced um, production wise. I came up on I came up on the jazz with Jay. Jay Jay was a was was a super hot producer um, back then. He had did um he had did Suicide for Busy B. He was kind of big. He had did Sexy Master Ceremonies, Cracked Out. He did the first two or three singles for the Def Jam label. He, he, he damn near started Def Jam. I mean, this is all a fact. It's yours. L from J, I need a beat. Um, culture. You know, lots of things, so you know. Main Street, uh, Planet Rock. He came from all of that. And when I hooked up with Jay, um, probably like 88, 89, he more or less just took me under his wing. You know, I was just the young dude, you know, just had mad records and he um, took a liking to me to be under his wing. But he's the one who made me like influence me. Uh, when, when you do your thing for a long time, whether it's DJ and RMC, and uh, at the end of the day, you know you, you certainly don't remember every every party that you rocked or, or anything like that. But just a question for both you guys: What would be just off the top of your head, like one party that was just really epic, like something that you'll always remember, you know, even towards the end of your career? Like what would be one kind of major event or party or show? I just did DJ Spinner's 40th birthday party. That was retired. <laughs> Yeah, it, it just brought me back to when I was doing the clubs in the 90s in New York. The place was packed. We didn't play a record past, I think, 93. You know what I'm saying? And it was all hip hop. Even at end house, actually. Spinner played house. Scratch played um, all the 80s stuff. But if you go to my SoundCloud and you just hear the crowd, doing all the rappers ad libs. I was just like, my head standing up right now, just thinking about it, just talking about it. It was crazy, you know what I'm saying? It was just that feeling, that vibe, the, the sound system was right, the club wasn't that big, you know what I'm saying? It just felt good. Everybody was happy, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was smiling, there was nobody up against the wall, like, you know, trying to be hard, and everybody was having fun, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's what parties is about. And that will stick with me for forever, because that was that took me back to my childhood days of in Brooklyn and in New York doing the parties. You know what I'm saying? It's just that's what parties should be. I have a couple, but I would say just one that sticks out to me was when when Big L was murdered. Um, Digging in the crates crew, we all we all gave it. We gave a, um, a tribute concert at Tramps in uh, Lower Manhattan, and just the energy of that and the emotion of it, um, of that set that we did, you know, that that's gonna always <coughs> stick out to me. Thank you. All right, um, my name is Concept. I do a uh, radio show. I'm co-host of a radio show um, on WMNF called Saturday Night Shutdown. It's from midnight to three o'clock in the morning. It's all underground. We try to keep it underground. We have three DJs, and one of y'all definitely do know, um, Charlie Chase, DJ Charlie Chase, who should be making it here later on tonight. But um, I have a few questions for y'all. Um, first of all, basically, like, what musically was pivotal in your life that made you, number one, become a DJ, number two, want to become a producer? 
Well, me growing up, I must have been like 10. Walk to the store, get your mom milk, stuff like that. There was these kids across the street, two twins. They used to set up their set outside the gate in the house. Now, in Brooklyn, where I, where I grew up at, there was like brownstones, houses like all attached. And in front of the house, in front of the yard, you had steps and then you had a gate. Inside that gate was their set, but it was across the street. So I used to stand from across the street watching, seeing what they were doing and they used to cut. And I'm like, man, I want to do that. You know what I'm saying? That was the first glimpse of it. You know what I mean? And then in, in 85, I started doing my parties. Like I said before, the, the, the crew was massive at work. We did the parties. We used to rent these little halls and buy the beer and stuff and, and, and do that and, and just play music. There came a time where I stopped wanting to carry records, carry crates, carry speakers, carry amps and all that. I just wanted to go to the next level. You know what I'm saying? And I had Todd as, as somebody who was making a lot of music at that time. Todd was doing Jungle Brothers. Todd was doing a lot of different, as well as uh, Roy House and his own projects and stuff like that. Um, and watching Todd, I wanted to do that. You know what I mean? And, and that's what made me want to go from DJing into production. Production, like I said, Jazzy J, just being up under him, um, he taught me the art of the art of production, and it's really a science to it. Um, just, a, just a quick note: the suicide. Um, All right, so um, that little guitar part is the guitar of a funky drummer, but you wouldn't even know it. But not to even dwell on the technical aspects of it, but he's the one that really got me motivated to be a producer. As far as being a DJ, um, in my neighborhood in the South Bronx, there were two local DJs named Supreme and Hutch. They would set up, they would you know come outside and set their equipment up, and just as a young kid, just watching them, since you know because they lived they lived in the project, so you know it was, it was just right there in my face. But just seeing, just watching them made me want to get into it. Come a DJ back then.